All right, good evening, folks. Hey, this is Jeff Fisk at Be Steel Creations Custom Muzzleloaders. Um, it's uh, March 31st, 2020. Just wanted to get on here. I've got some stuff on my mind I wanted to share and just some, you know, ideals and thoughts that I have, some of the ways I do certain things, and um, just wanted to share with that. Um, usually the shop stay really, really busy in here. Um, thankful with all the country situation uh, where the world um, with the virus and all that I'm healthy um, family's healthy and um, work for a get natural gas company so I'm able to go to work every day um, so I am blessed with that and and just thankful you know I mean uh, Lord keep us and, and keep us safe and, and to get us through this time it's gonna be a looks like it's gonna drag on um, Usually I stay very busy. Some of you know I'm on some of the forums. I post some stuff. Facebook I've been kind of slow here lately. I've kind of backed off, um, trying to keep up with the with life and the shop and and all those things. And a lot of times comments on different forums lead to more comments over the phone, and it's sad, but that that gets a little bit overwhelming. Um, on that, I'm going to touch on something I've touched on before. Um, I work for a natural gas company, as I said. I'm on call basically 24/7. 365 days a year so um, I can't turn my phone off so people be aware of you know timeline where you're at if you're out on the west coast and I'm in Indiana and you know you call me at 9 p.m. it's midnight here or or one so just keep that in mind I a lot of people like to PM on Facebook and um, the different forums and I, I truly would appreciate uh, reach out to me via email. Um, I can track those really well throughout the day. If I get one, I can start it. I can save it. I can pull it right back up when I get home and print it off if it's something I need to discuss. And I will get back to you. Email is fisk, F-I-S-K, 1967 at gmail.com. So, that being said, um, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to buzz around with this, the camera here a little bit I'm not a video I'm not a video guys very good so I'll do my best kind of show you my shop what I got going on what I do um, and then I'm going to touch on I'm going to give you a kind of an overview right now so if you want to stay hang on here or you may not want to hear any of it but I'm going to go through different breech plugs just some theory thoughts behind that um, black black horn black horn powder I'm going to get into that um, that's a big discussion. Cleaning, not cleaning, breech plug maintenance, sizing bullets, my opinion. Um, different bullet types that work, don't work, why, wads, importance of wad or not. Um, uh, bullet fit, and that's gonna that bullet fit's gonna lead into um, uh, breech plug design. And then I'm gonna go over something that's a little different. But I'm going to touch on what they call a Satterley test or finding the nodes, optimum barrel timing, optimum charge weights. I'm going to get into that some, uh, building a drop chart. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to get into some smoke. Let's go over a couple things on that. And some guys will be interested, some won't. But I think it'd be helpful, just something to, to hear the different things and, and what's, what's possible. So. Bear with me. I tried to get this phone to switch or the camera, and I can't get it to work. And um, so, anyway, I'm just going to kind of hang along. That's my little uh, workbench there. It's on wheels. Um, I can move it around wherever I want. You'll see there that gun and that um, gun and that gun vise there with a little workstation. Uh, that's actually Woody. It's not going to look right to you because it's in a different stock. I actually sent Woody's stock out to a guy to have adjustable cheek piece put on it. But that's uh, that's Woody. There's a bunch of notes, stuff I'm going to go through tonight. Um, I got a really special gun over here. Um, I'm struggling with the camera here, but you'll see that's got a, that's a full-blown custom paint job, custom Omega that's built for a high mountain goat hunt, sheep hunt. Um, high mountain hunt and that that little rig there is smokeless Omega a custom that I built it's got a beautiful Leopold 2 by 12 by um, 44 I believe 42 2 by 12 42 VX6 HD awesome setup that little guns eight pound gonna be a, a killing machine um, so buzz around I got my toolbox there 
a uh, little bench with all kinds of different, um, obviously, little tools and torque wrench. You know, I mean, the stuff you need to build a gun. Um, quite a mess. I got stuff all over every wall, places covered with stuff. Sandblaster. Um, come around, you see my little lathe. Um, it's been a good little dude. It's in good shape. Put a digital readout on it. Had a guy rework everything. Square it up. It, it, it cuts tremendously well. Um, all carbide tooling and, and holders and whatnot that I use. Got my little heater. Um, little propane heater. Dehumidifier. Small little mill. Of course, I got my jams up there, my radio. Um, small little mill. Mostly, I don't do a whole lot of hardcore milling. That's really a, a souped up drill press so I can drill and tap holes for scope bases is primarily what it does. Do and let some stocks with it. Um, but it's not something to no production machine but works well um a little workstation back here got my old vice on there it's been around a long time with my grandpa's got some load boxes up there for different guns i got um you'll see get you dizzy but i've definitely got uh bullets lots and lots of boxes of ammo or bullets for muzzle loaders back here that adds up really fast and boxes about you know 100 and some a piece um, some modules laid out I just got them out of the sonic cleaner and cleaned those up the other night some modules after shooting some actually was shooting some black powder stuff um, different stocks bipods all kinds of sizing stuff press um, you'll see that the sizing die we'll talk about in a little bit um, the press there I got my cleaner I'm jumping all over here, but anyway, powder measure, got several drops, um, RCBS powder drops, I use those, I'm going to get into that, I use those for my Blackhorn, and um, you'll see a lot more, a lot of Fury bullets, Parker B's, um, got some really nice um, bipods up there, some rest, a little Arbor Press back here. Um, Got a safe tucked in there. That's my own stuff. Um, gun cases up top. Gun cases, more gun cases. And give you a quick rundown. There's a lot of build stuff getting ready to happen. You'll see a lot of Leopold scopes. All them blue top tape boxes are individual guns that I'm working on. So everybody's parts are coordinated in one place. Got gun cases down there galore. Um, like I say, Leopolds, a lot of Leopolds, a lot of CDS Leopolds. All them boxes are going to be guns. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not sure how many I got going right now, but several. Um, like I say, every one of those blue stripes is an individual gun. May have an action in it or a base, scope, rings, trigger, who knows, just stuff in it. Um, like I say, got a pile of gun cases down there new in the box for shipping them out when they're done. Um, black horn tubes, wind flags, a lot of smokeless powder, um, I don't know, there's some Swiss up there, there's 10 pound of black horn, more black horn, black horn tubes, more smokeless, and a couple more safes, I'm probably making you dizzy, but I'll bear with me, I'll about to settle down here um this is my little office i've got uh, just a variety of parts oh, I, a lot of parts uh trigger tech triggers i don't know five or six of them there there's a scope i'm gonna post up somebody needs to buy that really nice swarsky scope i'm gonna move for a fella um got some metal back there um Little parts, all kinds of breech, all them little trays, breech plugs, screws, bolts, action screws, taps, drills. Um, say there's some metals, there's some awards up the top for stuff. Prints, blueprints, different pricing thing. I got my lab, or my magneto speed there, lab radar, I mean. Um, little printer in the back, and then this is where I spend... A lot of time on the phone, 
sitting at that little area right there, figuring up jobs and guns. Got me a filing cabinet with all my records and more stuff on the wall. Um, some more, actually, some Indiana State records, Indiana record books. Killed, I don't know, five or six. I got in the Hughes record book. Um, and then cleaning patches, ramrods, just an accessory of stuff. So that's my little shop. Uh, nothing fancy, but it 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 does the job for me anyway. And uh, seems like I'm able to produce a pretty decent weapon. So let me move along. I'm, I know long winded. That's ten minutes of just running around and talking, but. Um, let me jump right in and get get this going. Um, so I want to I want to touch on breech plugs real quick. I'm gonna knock knock this out. So I do a custom plug for a TC um, Omega or Encore that used the older style plug, um, the one with the hex head, not the not the quick release job. You screw out your finger. This is actually the hex one, and obviously there's several things here it's got a small flame channel um primer tend to leak if they're not head spaced right some of them are but they're close and they tend to flame cut the nose a little bit omegas are not bad and, and partly because they've done a great job machining the ceiling surface in the barrel and then your flash hole over time will burn out you got to monitor that and so going off of what I've done to a lot of the nights, I wanted to offer something that was better. So primer, as you know, sticks out a lot. Doesn't seat very deep. So I tried to support that. I made the pocket deeper, made the hex a little longer. Just changed the design of the plug. And you'll find, uh, if you get one of these and you can machine them and fit them yourself, most guys are sending me the gun, having me to fit them in them. So it, it's just been through it know what it kind of takes to do it and i can do it pretty quick um but with a 297 breech plug or a primer in it that plug that's a factory omega plug where it measures one inch 320 thousandths this is a the custom plug you'll see the hex is taller primer seats much deeper uh it's made out of 17 four stainless it's hardened and that plug comes in at one inch 354 thousand so you basically got about 40 it's too long so you machine off the face until you get the proper head space unique thing nice thing with that more primer insert fits the pocket better not tight so you can still get it out your finger but that has a tungsten carbide bushing uh, 5 30 second flash hole and that bushing can be changed and these these come with a 35 bushing in and that works phenomenal and breech plug design, we're going to get into that because it makes a huge difference with black one. I'm just going to touch on this. A few of you have seen on some of the things. That's a little breech plug for a white. And Ed Melling helped me walk through that. He actually, actually had me make some. And that plug utilizes, you can use it for a musket or a number 11. It's 17 4 stainless also. Awesome deal. So you can replace the nipple instead of replacing the whole breech plug. And in my opinion, it's a much better piece. So that'll last, that will last a lifetime, that little rig. You've seen this. This is a one-piece. can be installed as a one-piece breech plug for a bolt gun night. It's the same. It's long on the nose. You machine it to fit in particular guns. Some guys sometimes will install it as a two-piece. And it, this inserts into the barrel and you lock tight it in place and now you have a rear ceiling breech plug which is which is great um i won't i won't go through that there's other videos and stuff all the details of that and then there's just different designs of um plugs that i use i use a lot of arrowhead that's a gen 2 plug for a module it's just module setting in there that has a big long chamber that goes back and the, the bushing or the flash hole is actually right back here at the module. And then there's a variation of that for your 700 ml and it has the carbide bushing out front so the flash hole is up here and takes a different module and then you have a 209 plug 
and the flash hole was in the front, so you got a flame channel. And some don't understand, but I'm going to quick. The reason that has a flash hole in the front, and there's a flame channel, and then a 209 primer back here, or with the other module variation in a 700 ml, the difference is 700 ml, Omega, a lot of the just regular guns, they're not equipped to sustain the head pressure that a center fire Remington will make on the module. So you can, on a center fire with locking lugs, like a, you're using a cartridge rifle action, you can have the flash hole back here and put full chamber pressure right on the module. That's what its intention is, and put fire into the powder quick, especially smokeless guns. The 209 stuff we do, say the ASD 209 plug, has the flash hole up front and you got a flame channel. Just redneck way to look, but it, what, what happens is when it ignites the powder, it's got to fill that chamber with pressure and the 209 cannot withstand, let's say you got 40,000 pound chamber pressure in a particular gun, or 50 in a smokeless gun, and you're using that plug. The primer, 209 primer cannot sustain that. So with the chamber there to store that pressure, it allows the bullet to exit the barrel in time before that primer sees full pressure. So works the same way. So when you kind of think about when I put a two-piece plug in a night, you got an 80% thread, let's say. So there's 20% gap. Pressure is going to enter that thread and it start going it's going to start building pressure between these two as it goes back toward that rear seal so you know the plug is going to turn black so far back usually three or four threads on the on the rear sealing plug will turn black and then from there back it's clean it's doing the same thing as a flash channel or a flame channel in the middle is it's allowing that pressure to disperse the bullet exit and that rear sealing portion never sees full chamber pressure now, a front sealing plug is right there. It sees immediately full, full chamber pressure is on the front seal. Savage tried that, and that's why they gas cut, because it's seen full pressure immediately. Instead of being a, a time, it disperses that pressure, tries to equalize the bullet leaves in those milliseconds, and it, this doesn't see full pressure. Same as the 209 primer cannot see full pressure. It couldn't, it couldn't take it. I've, un, I've been told a 209 primer will hold 19, 20,000 pounds. That's about like a really, really, really hot shotgun shell. So 209 was never designed to see 30, 40, 50,000 pounds in chamber. So this works the same way. Hope that helped a little bit on that. Um, so I'm going to bust through this. I got to stay quick because I'll run out of time on my, on my little video camera here. Black horn powder. I'm going to tell you how I do it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I think I've got quite a bit of experience. I don't know how many. I don't know. I would probably say hundreds. I don't know. I don't know if I could say hundreds and hundreds of pounds, but I've probably shot well in excess of 100 pounds of black horn easily. Um, and been shooting basically the black horn since it came out. Now, I'll be honest, I've learned a whole lot in the last four or five years shooting competition with it and then building custom rifles and trying to get the most out of every one and there's going to be there's guys all over the map i mean shooting huge loads in these custom rifles all the way down to what you can shoot in a in a factory gun i'm going to try to stay closer to the factory thing because that is what i deal with personally um on my personal rifles because the blackhorn stuff personally I shoot in the inline matches and stuff at Friendship, at the, you know, in the Nationals, the NMLRA, which is an awesome event. You should come and check it out sometime. It's a really, really neat event. But that being said, so I, I feel like I, so feel like I do it what's best for me. All of my rifles for a long, long time, I have cleaned between every shot, and I advocate doing that. And there's a lot of reasons why, but you can keep a consistent the barrel is consistent. So my cleaning process is I take hops number nine and I mix it 50-50 with 91% rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Mix it 50-50. I use a damp patch. This is, I, I call it hops 10X. That's my, my name for it. But that, that is alcohol and hops mix 50-50. I keep these little patches. 
in this little tub and they're damp they're not soaking wet but they're wet you know what I mean they ain't ringing wet but they're plenty wet and I stroke that down a couple passes down to the breech plug pull it out I run two dry patches behind it and I reload the gun a lot of guys say you can shoot them dirty that's fine I I'll tell you when the humidity is up down dry hot cold all different atmospheric conditions that will turn into a mess and you cannot shoot 10 15 20 shots consecutively with a fouled gun when you're trying to load especially you're trying to load a copper jacket lead core bullet bullet to bore and when it's when I'm cleaning between shots I can load that bullet consistently the same over and over and over and over all day long now a lot of discussion on sizing I load and I've told several people this I shoot for this I put my gun on a scale on a bathroom scale I zero it and I shoot for a 20 pound loading pressure I want about 20 pound going down now I may adjust that but that's where I'm going to start with a new rifle to make it shoot so that's that's what I'm going to do um, sizing bullets so you get I'm shooting for 20 pounds loading pressure I see a lot of guys trying to shoot copper bullets monolithic you know monolithic bullets uh, bullets that are made for rifles um, there's very specific bullets that we're shooting and they're made for what we're doing you can't take a 30 40 50 thousandths jacket bullet and expect Blackhorn at 84 grains or 120 by volume to bump that into the rifling if you're setting it on the rifling and trying to shoot that way. So there's bullets. Bob Parker was one of the first, a 15,000 jacket ballistic extreme. You can shoot them out anything and shoot outstanding as long as you make them fit decent. And then um, Kyle and ASG and several came out with a, the 21. So Bob Parker had a match hunter look similar to that, 28,000 jacket. Just a tough bullet, in my opinion, for an 84 grain load to bump it into the rifling, get good, uh, good abuteration, and the bullet bumped into the rifling consistently. So they went to this uh, 21,000 jacket. So, when a guy's trying to shoot bullet to bore, you got to pick the right bullet. You got to make it fit right, and and then you know the next question comes into that is wads. I have guys all the time. You shoot a wad? Do you not shoot a wad? What kind? You know, I've came to one thing for years. I shot a veggie wad under every bullet. Last year, I did start shooting some dry wool wads and had great great experience with that. For for a 209 ignition gun, this is my opinion, a 209 ignition gun with the max load of a factory, what Blackhorn recommends is 84-120, I believe it's imperative you have a wad to get consistent ignition, pressure, and um, get the bullet to bump completely. We found in the smokeless world, as you start pushing high pressure, we can take the wad and throw it away. Now. I still shoot a wad in every round that I shoot down range. And I'm going to tell you why, because I'm a hunter first. And if you think of it in theory, I can size that bullet. I can get 20 pounds of loading pressure with no wad in it, 84 grains of black powder by weight or 120 by volume. And if I fit it tight enough and do my part, it's going to go off with the plug breech plugs that I use and make. It's going to go off every stinking time with a 209, and it's going to shoot accurately with a 21,000 or thinner jacket bullet. Fury makes some 25s and he's using dead soft copper and pure lead. They bump easily. They're no issue at all. The problem I have is when you load that bullet to bore, it's setting on the bore. So it's setting on the rifling. And if you're a hunter, there's nobody in their right mind is going to leave their powder setting out on the bench. And you go hunting, you have every groove the rifling grooves whether it's a six groove or an eight groove if you got that bullet fit in the barrel you can see light around it so water humidity anything is going to go straight to the powder so i'm going to shoot a wad under my bullet and i'm going to figure out what it takes i'm of this adage 
I've had guns shoot outstanding with no wad and I can stick a wad in it and they still shoot outstanding. I've had guns that won't shoot without a wad and you stick a wad under it and they shoot great. So I'm under the mindset I'm just going to use a wad under every every one. Um, you know, I'm just going to use a wad. And it's going to either be a veggie wad, an 062 veggie wad, or a uh, eastern main dry wool wad. And, you know, that's what I'm going to, do, going to get into. Um, I went in over bullet fit a little bit. You know, the importance of bullet fit. And, you know, that's going to be key. And we'll get into that. Um, and, and breech plug design. Um, went through that a little bit so looking at my camera here, it looks like I'm gonna run out of video time I don't know what's going on there but um, there'll be a I'm gonna call this part one I'm gonna get my camera I must have my memory about used up on my phone I'm gonna clear some stuff out I'll be right back uh, there'll be a follow-up video right behind this and it's pretty much going to get into um, velocities with black horn extreme spreads that people talk about um, the variances between shot to shot on velocity i'm gonna get into some of that on ballistics got some charts here and i'm gonna go over through some of this other stuff and some saturday testing i was hoping to get it all in this video but um bear with me um give me a few minutes and i'll get another video up and running here so check me out here in a little bit i'll send up part two thank you and you have a great day god bless you